And of course, when it comes to tomorrow as well, there'll be a full grid of 34 cars ready to entertain everyone to pick up those points and do as best as possible as they can. But the seniors are lined up down in the assembly area. The Park Ferme green light now goes on and the cars head out onto the circuit. And this is how heat number five for the seniors is going to line up. On the front row in pole possession, position, even Leonard Hugenboom. Uh, alongside him is Ed Brand. You, if you're watching on the feed, you'll have seen him doing the track walk and he certainly has uh, rung true to some of the uh, key areas that he pointed out to us. On the second row is Alessandro Trombelli and Jordan Lennox Lamb. He has already has a win in the bag from the previous heat. Row three is Christopher Dreyspring and Josh White. On the fourth row, Maurizio van der Laan and Mattia Livraghi on his home circuit. In ninth is Carol Dabsky with Max Timmermans alongside in tenth position. Tom Grice, Carlos Gill on the sixth row that have had uh, quite a mixed bag of, of fortune over the course of this weekend already. Seventh row is Jakomati Paulin and Berke Besler. Remember, Berke Besler comes into this third in the championship, starts in 14th. He's got some work to do. Martin Mortensen in 15th, another one that Matt highlighted earlier in the weekend to uh, keep an eye on. He starts in 15th alongside Shane Daly in 16th. On the ninth row is Gary Donnelly and Mike Bartels. Row 10 sees the Peruvian Gabriel Delgado Barrios and uh, Maximilian Schmidt in 20th position, Jake Craig and Sam Smelt in the 21st and 22nd back on the 11th row. So there we go, 22 cars starting and uh, as the sun comes down just to sort of uh, make visibility a little bit harder in here for us, it's got to be for the drivers as well Matt, that's a new challenge they're going to have to face. Yeah, the sun is starting to set very quickly here at the circuit, so it means uh, on the, the driver's eye lines, they head down probably towards turn one. That's where they'll be catching a glimpse of it. Uh, most of them will be wearing the, the appropriate visors, so they should be able to cut that sun out, but we'll see what happens with this one. We can see the grid there, as Chris gave it to you, with Leonard Hugenboom and Ed Brown, the two guys up front, and Ed, again, has been on the outside line on most occasions that he's been racing in, so Ed Brown, again, will be a little bit nervous heading in towards turn one, but it depends when the lead man goes on the power, because if there's enough of a gap that leads first and third, there is a slight breather for Ed Brand or whoever's in second place to jump into that gap and try and get the, the inside line down towards turn number one. We know it's grippy. We know it's uh, very tight through there as well. And if you're out on the uh, line, which you don't really want to be on, and then you can go off and uh, maybe get a bit of contact as well. But uh, Ed Brand is ready to go. Second place is back in the rest of the field up. He's not quite alongside uh, the man who starts on pole position at the minute, Leonard Hugenboom. And then, of course, behind him, Alessandro uh, Trombelli as well. He's all poised to go for his team. Strawberry Racing, the acceleration builds once again for the seniors. The lights go out and away we go down towards turn one. Ed Brand's getting the push from behind there from Jordan Lennox Lamb but they're not going to quite make it ahead of our pole man, uh, Leonard Hugenboom. Ed Brand now gets into second place at turn two. Jordan Lennox Lamb up the inside for third place. That pushes Alessandro Trombelli wide as well. And the next man to try and get his way through there looks to be Christopher Dracepring. Everyone safely through the first couple of corners. No yellow flags and everybody down the back straight for the first time of asking. But again, a perfect start from Leonard Hugenboom. Can he hold on to this one as Ed Brand tries for a move already in these early stages at uh, turn number seven. But he's just going to have to bide his time for the time being, see what happens ahead of him. And see what happens now as Ed Brand goes for the move. He gets the job done and he leads the race at the hairpin at turn number nine. So Ed Brand, we thought it was coming at turn seven. In fact, it happened at turn number nine and Ed Brand now leads the field for the first time this weekend up over the kerbs into the final corners. He's ahead of second place now, Leonard Hugenboom and Jordan Lennox Lamb sits there in third place. Wow, that is incredibly close and what a performance by Ed Brand. I think it's fair to say that that's the best start we've seen from the outside row uh, by anybody so far this weekend. For him to start second and slot into second through that first corner where the inside line is where it's all out, that was a brilliant performance and to be able to then make that move too, so soon Hopefully it's not too soon, or he will be hoping it's not too soon, because he's still got all over the back of him, Leonard Hugenboom and uh, Jordan Lennox Lamb. The three of them are pretty much joined together, and I'm sure that uh, Alessandro Trombelli will be desperately trying to get on the back of the three of them. Still in the same order as they head round to the hairpin turn number 10. Back towards us, 11-12 brings them back onto the start-finish straight. The three of them have managed to make a break, but fourth position, uh, Trombelli has actually got himself into a lonely position, which I'm sure he's happy enough with as long as he manages to keep going forwards. 
Karol Dabski was trying to make a move as well for seventh and sixth places. It looks like Karol Dabski has just got through there and everyone now charges into the corner as well. We've got Tom Grice up there. We've got two, two, three in the mix as well, which is going to be the likes of the driver trying to get as best position as possible through the field there. It's Max Timmerman. So watch out for Max at the minute, really on the move to try and make some places up. And he's doing that just inside the top 10. So great to see that from him. It looks like Martin Mortensen's having a better race as well in cart 210. He's worked his way from uh, 15th on the grid again up inside the top 10 so watch out for him to see how he goes as well but Ed Brown continues to lead this race out front the senior man doing a great job just a brief glimpse over the shoulder there back to Jordan Lennox Lamb a third place then is going to be the man coming through this time at the minute which is going to be now Leonard Hoogenboom and then behind that in fourth place it's going to be in fact change there because Josh White has gone into third place great move to get himself ahead of Leonard Hoogenboom and then a slight breather back to fifth place which is uh, Alessandro Trombelli but the top four are giving the race at the minute with uh, eight laps just under to go. Wow, how has that changed so much? Is that uh, Leonard Hugenboom, he's going uh, to have to fight his way back up again. He's been able to dominate largely from the front by putting in some fabulous lap times. Now he's got to try and uh, find some uh, key elements of this circuit that suits him best for to, to try and jump up the inside. And I really am looking forward to seeing this. Oh, and we've got side by side as they go through. And it uh, looks like it's uh, Jordan Lennox Lamb's got into the lead. He's got ahead of Ed Brand. Uh, but uh, Ed Brand's still within striking distance. But look at that, how that's as quick as that. It's become what? four, five, six, six car train with the seventh about to join the back of that any second. So it's Jordan Lennox Lamb up to first, Ed Brand, Josh White, Leonard Hugenboom, Alessandro Trombelli, Carol Dab Dab Dabsky and Max Timmermans closing in on the back of that train as well. Yeah, Max Timmermans is definitely one to watch out for in cart two, two, three, the blue machine which now works its way through the right hander at turn number five. But look at this now from Jordan Lennox Lamb after getting past Ed Brand. He just starting to pull a cart or so away. No, it's not much. Ed Brown still will have a chance to try and dive back through and move there for third as Leonard Hugenboom gets back up the order ahead of Josh White. So that's a change on this lap. And then a fight back once more down at the right-hander at turn number nine, which sees Josh White again get back ahead of Leonard Hugenboom. So that didn't last for long at all, just a corner for those two. But all of this going on gives a slight breather to Ed Brand once again in second place. He then can focus his attentions on the leader, Jordan Leonard Slam. And that means the gap does come down once more. A quarter of a second between the top two. Third place then is still Josh White. Fourth place is Leonard Hugenboom. Fifth place is going to be that of Carol Dabsky. And sixth and seventh place is also in the mix as well with Alessandro Trombelli and Max Timmermans. And then just to give a mention to Christopher Dreyspring, if he can just keep with those seven cars at the minute, he may be able to make a move as well. But it's all action in this one. Just under six laps to go. And again, the moves can come from anywhere in these top eight places, I'm sure. Well, Burke Besler came into this in uh, third in the championship, but is uh, still running back in 15th position. Did just make up a, a position there, but uh, not getting his own way by any stretch of the imagination. So there's uh, a lot of work still having to be put in by the uh, championship contenders. But uh, great performance by uh, uh, Jordan Lennox Lamb. He might be British, but this is pretty much deemed as his uh, local circuit because he does live over here. We've got a black and white flag for car number 232 being shown there. Uh, who's that? That is uh, Jake Craig towards the back. He is being shown the black and white flag. Not sure what that's for just at the moment. But Ed Brand is closed right on the back of our leader now. Jordan Lennox Lamb. I think that uh, you're right is that uh, uh, Ed Brand was just able to take a bit of a breather. He, he spends most of his time coaching young drivers these days. But uh, he shows once he turns his hand to it, he's still got it. And he can be out there racing himself. He knows what he's doing, does Ed Brand. And he's right there with our race leader at the minute. Another experienced man within the karting world. Jordan Lennox Lamb, who leads the way still in this one. The top two in the rest of the field now turning their way through the hairpin at turn 10. Down towards the final couple of corners at 11 and 12. And it looks like Josh White has just broken away as well in third place. So a great job from Josh. He was sixth on the grid. He's now up into third place and starting to pull away from fourth place man, which is our pole man, Leonard Hugenboom. So again, yesterday he was very quick in qualifying, but today he's just dropping off the pace now with those quicker guys coming through and showing what they're made of. So Jordan Lennox Lamb down the back straight for what's going to be the eighth time of asking. He leads Ed Brand by still just a quarter of a second in this race. And now Ed will be worrying about what's coming from behind because Josh White, again, another coach who does very well to uh, help out youngsters. And Josh White there in third place will try and do his best now. Now to put the attentions and the attacking momentum onto Ed Brand at the same time. So time is ticking away very quickly indeed. Not long to go in this one. Just three laps remaining with the top three now just settling down briefly before it all going to unfold in the final few laps. 
Well, we've also got Martin Mortensen, Martin Mortensen that you said to keep an eye on. Started 15th, he's up into 9th, so he certainly has done well. But going the other direction a little bit is uh, Alessandro Trombelli. He was in the sharp end, but uh, he's uh, running down in 6th bar to start in 3rd. But uh, look at this, the front three are absolutely to get joined together. And you're right, Josh White is probably the one that's putting the most pressure on the cart in front. That cart being Ed Brand. So Ed Brand was hoping that he was going to be all back all over Jordan Lennox Lamb for the lead. But uh, yeah, he's probably having to be more aware of the cart behind uh, at the moment. And it does seem as though that is enabling Leonard Hugenboom to start closing back up again. Change for second place there. Josh White just getting down the inside of, uh, of Ed Brand down at turn number nine. He left it very late to do so. But Josh White now, we didn't think it would come this early on towards the, the end of the race. But Josh White just went for it. No hesitation whatsoever. And now he's going to be the next man to try and challenge our race leader, Jordan Lennox Lamb. The gap sits at four tenths of a second. And I wonder if Ed Brand will just sit here for the next couple of laps because that's all we've got left in the race. So Ed now will just watch out and see what Josh can do and see if he can have a, an attack on Jordan Lennox Lamb to try and get through but with that one move it really has opened up the gap between first and second so the chance now for those two to get into the lead may have just been blown. Yeah, I think you're right. Is that it's probably that that is the tussle, isn't it? The second, third. We know that Ed's uh, favourite spot for making a move is down into what he calls the restaurant hairpin, turn number seven, down the far corner of the circuit. Um, but uh, he's not quite close enough to do it there. He's now into the other hairpins, and he's not quite close enough to do it here either. We're heading now towards turn number 11, 12. The the last two corners, they will be completing their tenth lap. So they have now taken the last lap board. So here we go, the last chance. And somehow that's actually gone equidistant, to use your word from earlier, Matt, that uh, between those front three, Jordan Lennox Lamb is now back under pressure. He put in a 50-second lap compared to a 49 for Josh White just behind him, which has kind of meant that he's been real, reeled back in again. Are they going to be making a move down the back part of the circuit? Josh White is not hanging about in second place. He's really brought this gap down, and I'm sure he's going to go for something. If he can get close enough through the hairpins here, watch out for Josh White. Jordan doesn't quite go defensive in towards the first of those at turn number nine, but uh, I think he's now just going to be out of range here, is Josh White. He's tried his absolute best. He got past Ed Brand, but it's not quite going to be enough to get himself to a victory here in this, the fifth senior heat of the day here. But it's going to be Jordan Lennox Lamb for his second victory. He goes across the line. He'll be delighted with that performance once again a fantastic start from fourth on the grid from the outside of row number two he worked his way through to the inside line at turn one and from then on in he didn't really look back he worked his way to the front and he wins by a quarter of a second ahead of Josh White who got past Ed Brand two laps from the finish and Leonard Hugenboom comes home in fourth place for Strawberry Racing and then we've got Carol Dabsky in fifth Alessandro Trombelli another disappointing run from him from third on the grid he drops down to what's going to be sixth place with Christopher Dracebring Max Timmermans Martin Mordenson and Tom Grice to round out your top 10. Further back in 13th place, it was Carlos Gill. We had uh, Maurizio van der Laan down in 14th. Berke Besler, another disappointing run there. The man third in the championship, way down in 15th place ahead of Shane Daly, Maximilian Schmidt and Sam Schmelt. And uh, luckily in that one, everyone managed to finish. We had Matteo Lavaghi towards the end, 21st place, the Italian, and the American 22nd, Jake Craig, after disappointment in qualifying. More disappointment for him here in heat number five of the season. But uh, that was another good race from the seniors. Really good fight up front, which is what we want to see time and time again. And that leaves us with just one senior heat to come. And that'll be with us very soon here as the countdown continues. Just uh, six minutes or so to go.